One more quick thing I'd like to bring to your attention before we move on to the United States properly. Over the previous two parts, I posted three photographs that all had something in common. I didn't draw your attention to it, but you may have noticed it, even if subconsciously. Possibly having noticed it, you thought it was just a coincidence and didn't pay it any further attention. Take a look at these three photographs again. They were the ones of Karl Marx, George Washington, and Marquis de Lafayette. If you missed it, here they are again side by side. Look at what they're all doing with their right hand. Now why are they all hiding their hand like that? What does this hidden hand gesture mean? Does it mean anything at all? Perhaps it's just coincidence. Well, let's take a look at some more portraits of famous personalities from history. It happens far too often to be coincidence. This hiding of the hand gesture is actually from the 13th degree of Freemasonry, which is also known as the Royal Arch Degree. It is symbolized with the triple tau. Now this gesture is the sign of the master of the second veil. I won't go into the details of it, but basically what this gesture is doing is signalling to other initiates that they're part of the secret brotherhood and that their actions are inspired by Masonic beliefs. What they are saying is, it doesn't matter what I appear to be on the surface, this secret gesture tells you that we are working towards the same utopian end, you and I. We are both enlightened with the illuminating knowledge of Masonry. Remember in the Jesuits' oath, they talked about being on opposing sides in public, but secretly were working towards the same end. That's why we have both communists and capitalists making the same gesture here. Think also of the Hegelian principle, where two seemingly opposing ideologies are rubbed up against one another to create a synthesis. What these famous leaders are saying to the initiated is that there is a hidden force or hidden hand guiding the course of history and that they are a part of it. It's that hidden hand that we've been following throughout the whole of this series, so it should come as no surprise to us by now that Satan is still at work in the world. These illuminated ones think Lucifer is good and following him will help mankind, but as Christians we know differently. We know that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light and always has. We'll look more at gestures later. With this in mind, we should be careful not to pledge too much allegiance or get too fervent about either side in politics. There was a situation in the 2004 presidential elections where Americans had to choose between John Kerry and George Bush. What most didn't know was that although one was Republican and one was a Democrat on the surface, both were members of the Skull and Bones Masonic Society at Yale University. Both being Freemasons, did the American public really have a choice at the polling office, or were they voting for the same ideals dressed in different colours? There's a reason why, no matter who we elect, things always deteriorate in politics. Remember the Jezebel spirit looks to control men of influence for her own ends, so she will always go for the leaders of nations. That's why we should pray for them. But we should also remember the central verse in the whole Bible, which is Psalm 118.8, and which says, It is better to put your trust in God than in man.